for the 12 murders. Although the burden of proof is not as strict as that of an actual trial, the prosecution had little direct evidence linking Ng to the murders. Lacking eyewitnesses, fingerprints, and blood evidence, the prosecution would have to present its case mostly on circumstantial evidence. Their strongest evidence was the videotape found at the cabin entitled M Ladies. The preliminary hearing was the first time the tape was played for the public. On the tape, Lake and Ng were seen torturing two women, one of whom was Brenda O'Connor. Inspector Erdelatz explains the impact of the videotaped evidence. Brenda O'Connor is a woman who lived on the adjacent property with her boyfriend and his friend and their little baby. And you see her on film, she's handcuffed and she's begging Leonard Lake and Charles Ng for her baby back. She wants her baby back and she's crying. Of course, they killed this little baby and uh, uh, it's such a, a, a sad thing to see uh, her asking for this little baby back. The tapes were incriminating, but with so little physical evidence directly linking Ng to the murders, the prosecution would have to rely on the testimony of another criminal. Hey, Maurice Laberge had served time with Ng in Canada. To pass the time, Ng entertained Laberge with crudely drawn cartoons depicting his crimes and with stories of what had happened at Lake's cabin in California. To gain favor with his parole board, Laberge turned over the cartoons and told authorities the details of his conversations with Ng. One of the most damning cartoons depicted Ng killing a baby. Laberge testified at Ng's extradition hearing, detailing everything Ng had confessed during their jail time together. Laberge's testimony was presented as evidence. On November 13, 1992, the court found sufficient grounds to try Charles Ng on 12 counts of murder. The judge set his trial date for January 12, 1993. We felt that the case would be tried and, and over with uh, by 93, but no later than 1994. Well, that didn't happen. Um, what did happen was delay. Now that Ng knew he would stand trial for his crimes, he began a desperate attempt to delay the proceedings in any way possible. He filed a motion alleging that his court-appointed attorneys were incompetent. He succeeded in firing them, and the court appointed him new counsel. Because pre-trial publicity made it impossible to find an impartial jury in Calaveras County, Ng's new defense team filed a motion to move the trial. The judge granted the motion, moving the trial to Orange County in Southern California. A fully loaded 36-foot truck delivered a mountain of case material to Ng's new counsel, the Orange County Public Defender's Office. The material included hundreds of boxes of records documenting eight years of courtroom hearings, witness testimony, investigative, medical, and police reports, and thousands of evidence photographs. William Kelly, Ng's newly appointed counsel, asked for and received two and a half years to prepare his client's case. The prosecution made the move from Calaveras County, 400 miles south, to Orange County and prepared for the largest case of their careers. The years of delay worried prosecutor Peter Smith. As you know, in, in any case, uh, memories fade, witnesses die, and things of that nature. And so when you tack on six years um, to the life of a criminal case, that's a long time to delay a case uh, from going to trial. Good morning, gentlemen. Have a seat. Good morning, sir. As the prosecution and defense attorneys finalized their trial preparations, 
Ng again attempted to delay the process. But Judge John Ryan put a stop to his tactics. The case was finally going to trial. A prosecution team from Calaveras County worked out their strategy with Charlene Honaka, the deputy attorney general for the state of California. Yes, I know. She's a tremendous lawyer and a, a, a better person. She was, in essence, the heart and soul uh, for, uh, for this case and for the prosecution. As prosecutors prepared to begin jury selection, the team suffered a devastating setback. Maurice LaBerge was killed in a car accident while on parole. He was the only person to whom Ng had confessed his crimes. The prosecution had just lost its key witness. Thirteen years had passed since investigators began finding bodies at a mountain cabin in Calaveras County, California. Although they eventually linked 25 missing people to Lake's property, they only had enough evidence to charge Charles Ng with 12 counts of murder. Ng had managed to delay his trial for more than a decade, but could delay no longer. The murder trial of Charles Ng was finally about to begin. The accused serial killer's fate would now rest with a jury of his peers. Peter Smith's job was to select that jury. Because the case was going to take so long, we had to time qualify jurors. We had to bring in over 2,000 people from Orange County to ask them, basically, can you commit to the time it is, it'll take uh, to try this case? While counsel was Judge, in the midst of qualifying the jurors, Ng grew trial. agitated. Please restrain yourself. Shouting obscenities, he tried to halt the proceedings, telling the judge that he did not want a trial. Judge Ryan ordered Ng to wear an electric stun belt for the duration of the trial. The bailiff could trigger the device by remote control if he became violent again. Attorneys from the prosecution and the defense took a month to choose a jury of eight women and four men, along with six alternates. To protect their identities, each member of the jury was assigned a number. On Monday, October 26, 1998, the trial began with opening statements. For both the prosecution and the defense, opening statements serve as an outline telling the jury what they are trying to prove and how they intend to prove it. With the years of waiting over, Charlene Honaka rose to make the opening statement for the prosecution. What the evidence in this case is going to show is that this defendant, with Leonard Lake, planned and committed the 12 charged murders in this case. This is a chart which lists the 12 counts. The evidence will show that between a time frame from July 1984 until 1985, these 12 victims disappeared from the face of the earth. And this trial will tell you the story of what happened to them. Onaka described the property in Calaveras County as a killing field and a mass graveyard. Connecting this defendant she then told the jury about the M Ladies tape found buried near the cabin and how they depicted a partially nude Ng demanding massages from Kathleen Allen and cutting the clothes off of Brenda O'Connor. We're going to play for you two segments from that videotape as a means of demonstrating the evidence and in helping you understand. The videotape was the centerpiece of the prosecution's case. It showed the jury exactly who Charles Ng was, a man who not only tortured women, but who recorded his acts on videotape so he could relive them again and again. The videotape's dramatic. It is the most, uh, it is the most incriminating piece of evidence I've ever 
used in a case. Um, 